Hey everybody, in this video I'm gonna be talking about, hands down, the best table saw fence that you can put on your table saw. The table saw fence that I'm talking about is the Incra TSLS. The one that I have on my table saw is the 32 inch model. They also have, I believe, a 52 inch model if you have one of the longer table saws. This is compatible with a multitude of saws. Uh, it's not something that's compatible with, say, a job site saw. However, if you have something like this, a larger scale cabinet saw, then there's probably a way that you can mount it to your table saw. And an example of that is this is actually the second table saw I've owned with this on it. The first table saw I owned was a rigid R4512, which I know a lot of people watching this video may have that table saw. And I did not put it on there. I actually purchased it from a man who had already put it on there and it had the 52 inch rails and it was, it's really what opened my eyes to INCRA and the capability of this specific table saw fence. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it right off the bat. This thing is not cheap. It is expensive. As a matter of fact, this costs more than the rigid R4512 table saw that I had. Now that is a current, as of today, August of 2022 price when I had originally had it a few years back. That wasn't the case, it was a little bit less expensive. I paid $580 for this fence system for my saw stop. Now, what do you get for $580? Well, you can see right here and right here, you have your traditional front and rear rail. On the front end, we have the extruded aluminum fence. Everything as part of this is extruded aluminum. We have uh, what I'm just gonna go ahead and call this saddle assembly here, which actually holds the housing and this long rod that actually slides in it back and forth. I will be addressing a couple of other items that did not come with the kit that are available for additional purchase, should you choose. Um, but that goes along more with the installation. So keep an eye out next week. I will be actually doing an installation video on this on a saw stop to share with everybody some of the headaches that I went through uh, having a saw stop and then trying to put this on it. Now, not only was it $580 for this, I also ordered it in February and I got it at the end of July, which believe it or not, was actually earlier than when I was expecting to get it. There's probably a couple of reasons for that. One is demand and two is supply, right? Being able to get the materials, the backlog because of everything that's been going on the last couple of years, they say right on their website, six to nine months in order to get one of these. But let me tell you, I'm gonna show you now why it is the best fence, the most accurate, the most repeatable. It is just phenomenal and why it was worth that long wait. The first thing that I wanna bring your attention to is this long uh, threaded rod that you see in the back. This goes all the way from here, all the way down to the very end. The spacing between these threads is set up in a way that this can only lock in a 32nd of an inch increment. It cannot lock in between that. So this right here is how you clamp and unclamp and also use the micro adjust, which I will talk about here momentarily. But if this was all the way open and I slid this forward and I go to lock it down, it just moved a little bit. If it was not exactly on a 32nd of an inch increment, it will automatically adjust in order to do that. How does it do that? Well, that has to do with this mechanism here and a piece that this is attached to. So right in here, you can see that this also has those grooves. When you lock this, it pushes this into that rod. And when those two meet up, that's how they lock in perfect 32nd of an inch increments. That is also what stops the fence from moving left or right. So some of you might be going, you know, big deal. Like it, it automatically locks in place. What does that help me? Well, the days of doing this with your fence, bumping it to get that perfect exact measurement or try to match one later, which is where the repeatability of this system comes in so handy, is if you put it on a number, it's gonna lock on that number, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So let me give you a much closer view here. Let's go where it's not quite on nine. And I want you to pay very close attention to the numbers, specifically the nine when I close this. Did you see that shift? Let's go ahead and do it again. Let's do the eight. Let's just get close to the eight. Somewhere around there, close it. 
see the eight shift? That's because it locked exactly on the eight. So there's a few things that just separate this thing. And the first is repeatability. And that is why, because I know once I get this thing zeroed, I'm gonna walk you through how to zero it because that entails using the micro adjust, which is just uncanny how minute of adjustments you can make. But if I set this on five, I know it's gonna be set on five. If I go like this and I walk away and I do something else and I'm like, man, I forgot to cut two pieces at five inches. Well, guess what? I can go here. I can put it back on five. I can lock it down and I can cut my pieces knowing that they are gonna match the other ones that I cut at five inches. It's not a matter of, okay, am I, oh, I went too far. Okay, oh, I think I'm good. No, I get close, I lock it down. It's gonna lock it in place. Let's take a look at a couple of other key features of this table saw fence. So now let's talk about some other options. There could be tasks that you're doing that require predetermined cut locations. Maybe you have a router table hooked up to this, which I'll talk about in this video, but you can add these additional scales and set these up for whatever the project is. The main scale that you're gonna use is here in this track. And what you see here is a magnet, and this is actually a metal scale. Now, if I take this, it was zero. Now it's no longer zero because I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how to do that. But that is how you attach that to this magnet and that slides back and forth. And the reason for it being able to move is because you can adjust this based on what it is you're doing or the blade that you're using. One thing I do wanna mention is that this does come in an Imperial or a metric version. I will be completely honest. I 100% thought that I ordered the metric version because that's what I wanted. It did not come with that. What I ended up doing is actually ordering the metric metal scale that didn't automatically change my uh, system to metric. And originally I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll just put the metric scale in here. But on this back side, this rod, that is made for Imperial every 32nd of an inch. They do make a kit that you can buy that changes out this and the increments will be half of a millimeter. For those of you that are interested in, in metric, um, I will likely uh, make that upgrade. It is a stupid costly mistake on my part, but you can get this in both metric or imperial. There's three positions of the locking mechanism. So we have closed, which is locked, half open, fully open, right? So fully open is how I can move it side to side. Obviously this locks it down, I can't move it. Well, this is where the micro adjust comes into play. If I needed to do a micro adjustment, I would simply half open this and now I'll show you the micro adjust. So what do these knobs do? Well, this is how you can micro adjust it left or right. And when I say micro adjust, every click that you're about to hear is one one thousandth of an inch. One one thousandth of an inch I can adjust this fence. So if I wanted to go further this way, I would turn away from me. If I wanted to bring it back towards me, away from the blade, I would turn it towards me. Now, why is this crucial? Well, let's say you make a cut and you're trying to fit a dado or something like that. You can just use this and dial everything in perfectly. Um, maybe you're just a little bit too tight and you wanna take off a few thousandth of an inch. Well, you can do that by using this micro adjust. The other thing that this is very helpful for is zeroing the blade. Now let's go ahead and go through that process. All right, so I've got the blade raised up. So I wanna move my fence really, really, really close, not quite touching it. I mean, you can go and touch it and then back it off just a little bit. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lock it in place. I'm gonna turn this. I shouldn't be hearing anything, right? Because I know I'm not touching the blade. Well. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up into that half open position. And then I'm gonna move this fence to the right towards the blade until I just hear it kissing. And this right here, that's what we're looking for. It's just barely kissing the blade. So once I have that, I can go ahead and turn my black knob back to zero and I can go ahead and lock this down. Now I told you before, this is able to be slid left or right. So now what I wanna do, I know I'm zeroed now. So I wanna go ahead and put that scale right on the zero. 
And now I open this up and move it to say, uh, we'll say we'll go five inches, lock it down. I know that that's five inches. Now here would be an example of where that adjustability is really, really convenient. So let's just say you're using a standard blade. You're probably not gonna have any need to change that. But what happens when you put a dado blade into your table saw? The scales that are on your existing table saw are no longer the same. Sure, you can do some simple math in your head, but the blades are stacked towards the fence. So therefore, whatever you stack, whether you're shimming it and making it some you know, weird number, which would make it a little bit more challenging to even figure out, to be quite honest with you. Once you put a dado stack in with this fence, you just zero the fence to the dado stack. And then you know if you want that dado or that groove to be six inches from the edge, you set it at six inches and that's where it's gonna make the cut. That's actually a really, really nice benefit to this table saw fence is that you can adjust it based off the blade that you're using as well. Another thing I wanted to talk about before I actually do a demonstration and make some cuts just to show you the accuracy and the repeatability of the system is it's extruded aluminum with uh, you know slots where you can put different things, jigs. Um, I have the Jessam stock guides, which I will be putting on here. Uh, that'll be in the install video. But the other thing that's great about this is if you're not familiar with Inker's router table setup, I have a Inker router table and there's a product called the Wonder Fence. And there are these attachments that you can actually get and slide onto this. So you can turn your table saw fence into Incra's unbelievably impressive uh, router table setup. And let's say that your table saw would allow you to put an insert on the left end, or even if you were able to put an insert to the right of the blade, this would give you the ability to do that with this system. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple of scrap pieces that I have here. This is just some half inch scrap uh, plywood. I'm gonna cut some one inch strips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the first one, then I'm going to move the fence, and then I'm gonna set it back to one inch and make another cut. And the reason for that is because I wanna emphasize the repeatability of this system as well as the accuracy. And that repeatability is you're gonna be moving your table saw fence, you're gonna be doing that stuff. You don't have to bump it, set it, forget about it, make the cut and see the results. So let's go ahead and get this locked in place. I'll bring in close with the hopes that you can see the calipers there. One inch. Now we'll go ahead and get the measurement on the second piece one inch. Now, if you take both of those pieces, put them together, run your finger across the top, they're both exactly the same. Just feels like one piece. And that's what we're looking for. So there's some obvious pros uh, that I've talked about, shown repeatability, accuracy, adjustability, um, the ability to, to do add-ons, right? Other things on top of this because of the style fence that it is, and it would be very, very easy to do. Now, not everything about this is perfect, right? There are sacrifices that you have to make. So I covered some of the pros. I wanna talk about two cons specifically. The first one um, has to do with, this isn't specifically made for a saw stop, right? And I don't expect Inker to do that, but it's not specifically made for any saw. So with that in mind, understand that if you want to use the things that came on your saw stop, for example, if you wanted to put one of these on and use the extension table that's already on there, you're gonna to need to order more brackets. And I will cover that in next week's video where I actually show you how to assemble it to the saw stop because I learned some things and some struggles with the saw stop and installing it on one of those. Um, the other thing is they don't tell you that it's a good idea to get the support legs. They may not be needed. I think they absolutely are. That was an additional purchase that I had to make because they did not come with the kit. I believe if you buy the 52 inch model, it's highly recommended that you have the extension legs. It might even come with the kit, I don't know. But if, if I had to make a recommendation and a con is that this doesn't come with the legs, if you're putting it on a saw stop or whatever table you're putting on, I would absolutely want the Incra legs that go with it because it, they're easy to install. Um, they're not super expensive, 
but it is an additional cost and they go very well with the setup because it's Incra and it's meant to be used together. All right, the next big con um, is the fact that you need an ample amount of space to the right side of the table saw in the event that you wanted to, you know, make a rip cut or a cross cut up to 32 inches in this case. I honestly believe that this is what holds most people back from this is that you need the space. Honestly, this is the one thing that held me back from getting it for the longest time in my shop because of where I like to place my jointer planer. As you can see, it's at the end of my table. However, I lucked out on this one uh, because this is actually just ever so slightly taller than this. So I actually still have the ability to get 32 inches of capacity if I need it. And it does not inhibit me doing anything with my joiner planer other than maybe I have to move the fence forward a little bit because my fence isn't always forward like this. But this is a large space. I'll give you guys a, a measurement real quick. So it's 30 inches. It's sticking out 30 inches from the edge of my table all the way over here. So if you had something directly at the end of your table, it would probably be a problem. You would have to move it all the time. Um, again, like I said, I, I think I just got lucky <laughs> in this scenario and everything works really well. Um, but that is a big con. And that's, that's something that I know a lot of people are like, I don't want to sacrifice the space. It's not the normal thing, right? I think that's where people get, get stuck. So those would be the two cons uh, that I would definitely want to make everybody aware of before they go and spend uh, the money like I did on something like this. So I'll close this video out by saying, if, if you want an absolute guarantee of accuracy, an absolute guarantee of repeatability, this fence is the option for you. It is an investment, it is expensive, but never once when I had my previous saw or when I went to go purchase this one at a more expensive cost, have I ever said, man, I really wish I wouldn't have done that, right? It, I'm not even somebody who likes to get like in the weeds with absolute perfection and thousandth of an inch because I don't like taking the time to do that. The great thing about this system is it makes it so easy to do and it's so accurate and it works so well. It's just a, it, it truly is a pretty remarkable, I mean, anything Incra. I have no affiliations with Incra whatsoever. I've just always been a huge fan of their tools and this table saw fence is is nothing different. Like I said earlier, I will be doing an installation video on the saw stop. If you're somebody that owns a saw stop, definitely go watch that video uh, because it will be very, very helpful and it will hopefully save you the headache that I went through installing it on my saw stop. That's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or things that I did not answer, uh, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. And until next time, everybody get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.